Thank you, uh, Mr. Theodosiu. Please uh, allow me now to raise a few procedural and administrative issues for the smooth operation of the conference today. Kindly keep your microphone muted and your computer camera off. Questions should be raised during or at the end of each speaker's presentation. Please use the questions icon and not the chat icon to raise your questions. We will be monitoring the questions and will raise them after each speaker's presentation. In the agenda icon, there is an evaluation feature for each speaker. Kindly use it to evaluate each speaker. As we will not be reading out the full biography of each speaker, should you be interested to find out more details on the speaker, kindly refer to the program under the image of each speaker. In the agenda icon too, there is also an extra icon for the event evaluation. Please evaluate the event. Should participants face a problem with their connection and the screen freezes for some reason, please exit your browser and join in again. Finally, and most importantly, as we have an interesting and a full lineup of speakers today, I kindly urge our speakers to be cautious of their allocated time. I will try to remind the speakers when they are reaching their time limit. And now we shall proceed with the working part of the conference. The first presentation is entitled Diversity and Technology in the Maritime Industry. And our speaker is Mrs. Anna Burgos, Vista Cyprus President. Dear Anna, the floor is yours. Dear conference participants and guests, good morning. Firstly, please allow me to congratulate the organizers for pulling this conference through, despite the restrictive circumstances and for giving myself and Wista Cyprus the opportunity to put out our view on the table on diversity and technology in the maritime industry, something which is very close to our hearts, as you all know. Even though this is probably not the best way for me to kick off my presentation, I have to be honest with you, and admit that I am a dinosaur, and I am to an extent a technophobe, and I have often been seen to be technology resistant. So when I was first approached by Cyprus Shipping News to speak about this topic, I was thrown slightly off my comfort zone, let alone thinking, oh my God, what are they thinking? They're brave. So whilst I can talk about diversity off cuff, and for as long as you need me to, the technology part of the topic intimidated me slightly, and probably I did panic a bit. So I guess me doing the, the diversity um, and technology presentation covers diversity for more than one obvious reasons, obviously. And the fact that I'm actually delivering this at an ICT conference, which is being carried out online, shows that technology does perform miracles. As fearful and as resistant I have been in the past, I do recognize that we need to move with change and embrace technology. And yes, I do belong in the group of people that Socrates was referring to earlier. I admit, guilty as charged. As a pro-human interactive individual, however, I have only prepared two slides for this presentation, which I, was like, I would like you to look at for a couple of seconds and take a minute to notice your emotional reaction to them before we embark on our discussion. That is, of course, assuming I can manage to share my, share my screen with you. So if you just bear with me.
I don't think I have been very successful, have I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's just let's pretend that I'm not good with technology or just accept I'm not good with technology. I want you to picture this. Let's go back to human skills. Picture a black and white photograph of a beautiful red rose. And now picture a color photograph of a beautiful red rose or a bunch, a bouquet of yellow, red, violet, any color flowers that you want. I knew I was going to get that wrong, but never mind. So um, unfortunately, in addition to my lack of technical skills, um, I also don't have the luxury of observing your reactions to those images, if you have been able to see them at least. And the experience, the feeling that that has um, triggered to you. The emotional effect of color combinations in the images or in our imagination, to me as an artist at least, is a definition of diversity. Metaphorically, I often correlate colors with people. I believe that like the endless shades and tones of a color palette, humans have limited possibilities when blended together on an empty canvas, let alone the vast wide sea. If we analyze the images, we can argue that the monotone color represents the status quo of industries or organizations a few decades back when I started working. When in a company of 500, I was the only foreigner, the youngest person, one of the very few women in the company, and I was employed by accident, rather through a, through a, con a conscious decision, whereby the company felt that other than my loud floral jacket, I actually had something different to bring to the table. The color images represent today's diversity and the impact that we all realize and appreciate it can have on our organizations our lives, our, the communities we live in, and our industry, of course, when we tap into the full potential of human diversity. If we want to define diversity outside my own metaphoric color palette, diversity describes the range of human differences and variations, whether they're inherent by birth or acquired by experience. Differences that can form the basis for different forms of exclusions or result in different forms of discrimination. That may also vary among different geographical reasons or populations or organizations even in the same regions and the more often directly related culture. To illustrate the range of these characteristics, I took the examples from the recent World Economic Forum Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Toolkit. These differences are, but of course not limited, to age and generation, gender and gender expression, race, ethnicity, religion, nationality, language, mental and physical abilities, social origin, level of health, personal traits, and even appearance. And that's just, just not all, depending on um, different cultures, um, different, uh, different, different, um, traits or skills or, uh, or appearances may, may vary. It is widely recognized that diverse and inclusive teams have a broader range of knowledge and skills. In my opinion, diversity and inclusion efforts are more than just human resources responsibility. In fact, they are, and they should be, the responsibility of the industry and its culture. Company leaders are becoming increasingly aware that a company's brand, financial sustainability, ability to attract and retain talent are heavily correlated with a positive company culture. And this by extent applies to the industries that we operate. Unfortunately, in the maritime industry at present, career opportunities are still not open to all. And to a great extent, we are still a monotone picture. One that changes in tones and shades depending on the geographical region we operate. But the fact that we are also global makes it even more challenging to bring the same levels of diversity across the world. So how can we systematically challenge the status quo and achieve diversity and inclusion in our industry? And how can technology help promote diversity and inclusion in the industry and in the workplace, whether this is on shore or on board? Because 
as an industry, we don't only have to consider our workforce on shore, but also our workforce on board. And that's totally, two completely, totally different um, areas. In today's hyper-connectivity, as Socrates earlier explained, technology can be an enabler of greater diversity and inclusion in many practical and positive ways. First of all, with technology, we can promote diversity. Usually, where diversity is not observed, bias of some sort is present. I believe that the first and foremost way technology can help is the fact that it provides a global promotion platform. Through the mass and social media, diversity has and continues to be promoted by organizations, bodies, and pressure groups. The absence of borders enables the exchange of views and discussions across different geographical regions, having a cross-cultural influence on promoting diversity, reducing bias, and moving towards unbiased acceptance of diverse individuals in the industry, both ashore and on board. We also, however, need to promote the industry as an industry that embraces diversity. Shipping being a global industry can open opportunities for people and cultures across the world, like few many other industries can. We can use technology to access the world, but in parallel, through awareness, we also need to promote the industry itself as one that embraces diversity to attract the large pool of talent that is out there and not lose it to other industries. Technology can also assist in benchmarking diversity across the industry. Promoting diversity can be very abstract if we lack visibility. In the absence of actual data that can help us understand where the problem lies, we will not be in a position to take the right action. Data is gold, so Gradis elaborated on that. And through technology, we can collect data through surveys, and thereafter comb through it to identify the gaps and where the industry lags, which talent pools we're missing out on and why. Through monitoring of the data, technology can provide a cross-industry and geographical benchmarking of the progress we're making. Technology can be used in talent sourcing and selection, depending on the size of organization you are or depending on how the industry wants to apply it. Through technology, we can address possible bias in the proportion. In the, pro in the proportion of um, employment, but also in the promotion of the industry. It is not enough to say that we embrace diversity. We need to communicate that the culture of the industry is one that provides equitable and fair access to opportunities to all, and ensure that we appeal to different talent pools and populations of diverse candidates. Sometimes, it is as simple as the words we use or images we project. We should aim to achieve more diverse representation of maritime careers in the media through the various technology pools available to us. Today, there are tech-enabled solutions that can assist in expanding search capabilities to target these pools. Even when it comes down to advertising a particular position or job, the language of the job description may bias the application process. And this is something that we as a maritime industry need to be very careful of. We need to deviate away, walk away from the image that we have traditionally been projecting that the industry is male dominated, for instance, if we're talking about gender di um, diversification. When it comes to identifying and selecting candidates, technology can enable the process through platforms that have been designed to, move, to remove bias and evaluate candidates against the skill sets required, regardless of their gender, ethnicity, or any other distinguishing factor. But whilst recognizing the multiple ways in which technology can help promote diversity, at the same time, we need to remain vigilant that these tools are used in the correct manner and that the technologies deployed do not contain any biases originating perhaps from lack of diversity culture from the technology sector itself that creates these applications. As I say, with great power comes great responsibility and we need to remain on top of that. So we who work in the maritime industry are very proud of it. I am a proud person that I belong to this industry. 
It is one of the world's oldest industries and the first global business. We are an industry that employs millions of people around the world, onshore and on board. Yet, we remain monotone when it comes to diversity. We have a duty to identify why and an obligation to dispel the myths to improve our image through harnessing the benefits of technology. Diversity should be on top of our agenda. Technology, when combined with human-centric approach, is one of the greatest tools that we can access that can help us achieve promoting diversity within the industry and globally. But first of all, we need to make sure that we use technology to promote the industry itself. We as WISTA, in our IMO consultative status capacity, we have the opportunity to promote diversity, inclusion, and of course, women's empowerment. WISTA can now formally contribute to the discussion for increasing capacity in the maritime industry, a critical component of which is promoting women in the industry, both shoreside and shipboard and also showcasing the very technical skills and leadership that women can and do bring to the industry. Because unfortunately, our diversity, our main diversity issue here, uh, as far as the maritime industry is concerned, is gender. Since 2018, WISTA International has created a diversity committee, which is comprised of WISTA members from around the world, working together to develop resources and recommendations for increasing gender diversity and inclusion in the shipping industry. We will continue to remain committed to this role, and we are very confident that the industry itself will remain committed. Thank you very much for the opportunity, and I would welcome any questions that the audience may have. Thank you. Thank you, Anna, for a very interesting... You have raised some very interesting points as well. Uh, if I may ask a question, sitting here as uh, the chair of this morning conference, uh, in my limited sort of view of things, I always felt that we have tremendous diversity in our shipping industry. Maybe gender equality may be a question that we can discuss, but gender equality, to what extent do you think that, uh, sorry, uh, diversity, to what extent do you think that shipping is lacking or it should be doing more, if I may ask? Well, it depends. I mean, the, the reason I said it's, it's very difficult um, to actually reach and achieve diversity uh, to the same level across the world is because shipping is a global industry and um, in different parts of the world, we see different cultures influencing the industry as well. I mean, as WISTA, we see this because we have uh, 50 countries, members and WAs. And whilst us in the Western world, and I, I always preach this, that in Cyprus, we are actually privileged because we do not face any discrimination. Um, we do have the equal opportunities, but in other areas and in other countries, um, it is a very different ball game. Um, some countries are still where we were 30 years ago. Uh, some countries, um, the gender diversification is, has still a long way to go. Therefore, as an industry, um, we all individually, as different countries and different nations and different industries in our own home, um, we have to promote diversity in our own ways. But when it, we need to bear in mind how difficult it is. And that's why technology can help us, because then it can send the message of what we are doing here, for instance, the privileges we enjoy here, can also be an encouragement and empowering tool to the cultures and the areas that are less privileged than we are, so that they can be inspired that effort does bring results. Um, or maybe we can help them. Um, we can use the technology to mentor other areas that lack in diversity, perhaps, um, to the extent that we do. Now, obviously, I'm now talking about the onshore industry. Uh, when it comes to, when it comes to uh, offshore, um, as in seafarers, I believe from such statistics I have, I've checked, I believe that only 2% um, of, uh, of the seafarers around the world uh, are women. And from that 2%, uh, most of them actually are working in the, in the cruise industry. So technically they're not um, seafarers in the sense that we would consider uh, a chief engineer or a captain or an officer a seafarer. So um, in that respect, we do have a long way to go, Alex. Um, 
but it's not just the industry. It's not because the industry is not embracing diversity. This is why I focused on we need to promote. It's the way we promote and advertise the industry, that it is an industry that we embrace, um, you know, gender, uh, women, uh, or, you know, other, other uh, diversif you know, diver diversified groups. So if we, if we promote uh, images, if we promote, um, uh, you know, messages, the languages we use, if we divert slightly from making it appear male dominated and make it more appealing to women, then we will encourage women as well, because we may be embracing diversity, we may be um, uh, having uh, vacancies, but if we don't promote them rightly, we will not still be able to attract women or the talent out there. So we do have a responsibility to communicate that we really do embrace diversity. Um, and we really need to show that we have the culture that embraces diversity, because unfortunately, we're not there yet. We have a long way to go. That's that's my view. Perfect, Anna. I think uh, my question was a little bit naive, coming from a very narrow-minded European point of view. But obviously, you put the global picture, and that makes a little sense. Thank you. Um, I don't see any other questions. Is there a question uh, that I? There is one. Um... Can you see Anna, or shall I read it out for you? Uh, there is a question saying, uh, so do you think that there are no discrimination for crew making the change to shore position? I believe the industry has got caught up in a loop thinking that the diversity is all about gender, ethnicity and age and forgets that educational and field experience is also factors that enhance diversity. No, by all means, uh, by all means. Um, it's not just a matter of ethnicity or gender, or uh, it is also about skills. Sorry, Alex. Sorry, Anna. No, no, it's just. Me. So, if I may um, answer to Mr. Gary Malis or Mrs. Gary Malis, I'm not sure. Um, there I am. I'm assuming it is a male. Um, definitely, I totally agree with you. It is not just about uh, gender or ethnicity or age. It is also about uh, knowledge. And in fact, I, I had a, a lengthy discussion here with my colleagues in the office yesterday when I was preparing this. Um, it, it, diversity can be a combination of different things. It's not it's it's skills, it's knowledge, it's age. It is um, even though even the way we consider or look at the color picture, you know, if I go back to my um, uh, to my example, um, and yes, we should not we should embrace every addition to this beautiful image. That we should embrace a combination of skills of people, and we should not discriminate in any way. Um, unfortunately, you are right. Guilty as charged. Yes, there still is discrimination in that respect. Um, and again, we need to be communicating it more. Um, that's why I only left the gender, um, the gender comment in the end um, as WISTA, since I am speaking here as WISTA, but it, it is beyond gender. Um, it is all around. I'm not sure if I answered the question. Thank you, Anna. I think you've covered the question extremely well. And uh, seeing that there are no more questions, I can only thank you for your presentation. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity and good luck with the rest of the conference. Thank you.